Here we have a particle moving in a straight line with constant or uniform acceleration a. At t equals naught, the speed of the particle is u. At some time t later, the speed of the particle is v. Because a points in the same direction as the motion of the particle, the speed is increasing. So you see here that the speed, the magnitude of the this velocity vector is greater than the magnitude of the velocity vector here. Of course the acceleration vector never changes. It's constant. It always points in the same direction and has the same magnitude. Now we know from previous videos that the, the displacement of the particle is given by this formula here. The displacement s is a function of time of course. It's given by ut plus a half at squared. Um, we will use this formula to get the velocity of the particle at time t. Now the distance that the particle has travelled to get to here is s. And let's suppose that after a very small interval of time delta t, the particle travels a distance delta s. So the delta is the change in s if you like. Now we have to start by talking about the average speed of the particle over the time interval delta s as it travels over this distance delta s. So we get the distance travelled delta s and divide by the time taken which is delta t. Now this is only an average because if we make delta t smaller and smaller so now the, this second position is here if we make delta t smaller and we can keep making it smaller and smaller until it virtually coincides with this point and then the average speed over delta t will become the instantaneous speed at time t and that's what we're after. So how do we get delta s using this formula here? Well we want to get the distance travelled after time t plus delta t so we have to plug t plus delta t into t in this formula. So symbolically we have to get the distance of the particle from the origin at time t plus delta t and subtract the distance of the particle from the origin at time t and divide this by delta t. So this is straightforward we just plug in we subtract off s of t so we subtract off u t plus a half a t squared. Now we multiply u into t plus delta t we square out t plus delta t squared to get t squared plus twice the product of the terms as 2t delta t plus the second term squared delta t squared. We see that the ut's cancel out and we have a half a t squared here which cancels with minus a half a t squared. Now we multiply a half a into 2t delta t uh, that's going to give us a t delta t and then a half a times delta t squared. Divide each term by delta t so the delta t's will cancel here and we'll cancel one of the delta t's here. So we get u plus a t plus a half a delta t. So this is the average speed of the particle as it travels from this point here to this point here. So you can see that the average speed depends on delta t. You can see the delta t in the formula. So we can imagine making delta t smaller and smaller. We can let it approach zero. So if we do that, what is the average speed going to approach? Okay, so symbolically, here's our average speed. So we let delta t approach zero. So we take the limit of this quantity as delta t approaches zero. Well, you can see what's going to happen. Um, this thing here, well, this quantity is going to approach zero if delta t approaches zero. So we're going to find that the average speed is going to approach u plus a t. That's the instantaneous speed of the particle at time t. So you know that we call this instantaneous speed v. And this is the, our familiar formula for the speed of the particle at any time t given that the initial speed is u and the acceleration a is constant. But this quantity here is none other than the definition of the derivative of s with respect to time. We can write this as ds dt. So speed v is ds dt. Now sometimes you might see the letter x used instead of s. Um, x for the distance travelled. But think of s as space traversed. Okay so what we did was we just differentiated the formula for the distance travelled 
which is this formula up here with respect to time. We differentiated this formula with respect to time. But of course we can just do that by a rule. We don't have to go through all this business. Um, u is just a constant sitting in front of the time. So if we differentiate a constant times time with respect to time, we just get the constant that's in front of the time, which is u. Um, a is just a constant, it's just a number. So um, if we want to differentiate a half a t squared with respect to time, we bring the power, we multiply in front by the power. Two times a half a is one a. We take one from the power, so we get t to the power of one. So starting with this formula for the distance, we can differentiate to get a formula for the speed v. So this would be the speed an instant later. Um, you know, the gap here has approached zero. So we're getting the average speed over an infinitely small gap. That gives us the instantaneous speed v at time t. Now, we can get the acceleration from this formula by differentiating v with respect to time. This would be the instantaneous acceleration at time t. Well, if we want to do it from first principles, we would have to get the average acceleration of the particle over time delta t as it moves from here to here. And uh, then take the limit as delta t approaches zero. So let's just quickly see that. Um, delta v would be the change in the speed. So this would be the speed at time t, which we know as u plus a t, minus, well actually, I'm sorry, the speed at the later time, t plus delta t, minus the speed at time t. So this would be the change in the speed, well the change in the velocity really, um, and we divide this by the time taken. We have to take the limit as delta t approaches zero, of course, otherwise we will just be getting the average acceleration. You know, if we just calculate this quantity here, we'll have the average acceleration. To get the instantaneous acceleration, we let delta t approach zero. That'll give us the acceleration at time t. Well, as a matter of fact, in our situation, the average acceleration over any time interval delta t is a constant. Um, you'll see that now in a second. Okay, so... We get v at time t plus delta t, so our formula for v is u plus a t, so we just plug t plus delta t in for t, and we subtract it off v of t, which is u plus a t. And uh, you can see that the u's cancel out. You'll plus a t here, minus a t, and you end up getting a delta t divided by delta t. So we're getting the limit as delta t approaches zero of a, but we, we said that this was a constant. And the limit of a constant is just the constant itself. Again, we could um, just differentiate without using all of this first principles business. You know, u is a constant. If we differentiate a constant with respect to time, we get zero. A is a constant. So we've a number times t. If we differentiate a constant times t with respect to t, we just get the constant in front of t. Now, we know that v can be written as the derivative of s with respect to time. So dv dt is the derivative of the derivative of s with respect to time, with respect to time. And, uh, you know, this is the second derivative of s with respect to time. So acceleration is the first derivative of the velocity with respect to time, which in turn is the second derivative of the displacement vector with respect to time. I say vectors because these results apply more generally actually, not just for linear motion. You know, we could show this as a vector relation. Of course, um, for nonlinear motion, for motion in, uh, in two dimensions or three dimensions, you know, this quantity becomes more difficult to calculate. Um, but we won't deal with that here. Next, we will derive the equations of motion for linear motion with um, uniform acceleration. So, the particle's acceleration is constant. dv dt equals the constant a. So how do we go from this to v? Okay, we want to find v as a function of time. Well, we want a function whose derivative is a constant. Um, 
Now, formally, we would separate this equation so that v is on one side and dt is on the other side. By the way, this here is a differential equation. It's a very simple differential equation. We have the derivative of v with respect to t equaling a constant. Um, it's also a separable differential equation because we can write one of the variables on one side, that's everything involving v, and um, on the other side we just have the other variable t. a is just a constant, so that's just a number. So we can separate out the variables very easily here. So that's the first step to solving a differential equation. Well, t to solving a separable differential equation. That's the only type of differential equation that we will consider in this course. Now the next step is to integrate both sides. So we just stick an integral sign in front of the differentials on both sides. Now, let's take this integral here. Um, you could think of this as integrating 1 with respect to v. If you integrate 1 with respect to v, you will get v. 1 times v, or just v. Now, you'll also get a constant of integration, so I'll just write that in for now. Let's call that constant of integration capital A. Now, what about the right-hand side? We're integrating a constant with respect to time, so we just multiply the constant by the variable that we are integrating with respect to. So we get a times t and we get a constant of integration on the right hand side which we will call b. Now we can move the constant a to the other side so we get at plus b minus a. Um, now b is an arbitrary constant, a is an arbitrary constant so we can just combine these into a single arbitrary constant which we will call c. So when you integrate both sides, you can just write a constant on the right-hand side. You don't have to bother writing it on both sides because um, the two constants from both sides get subsumed into a single arbitrary constant. Now, this constant here depends on what the speed v is at a particular time. And the particular time that we are, that we are interested in here is the initial time, and t is naught. So if we go back up here, it says that the initial speed is u. Initial means when t is zero. Well, usually that's what the initial time is. Um, so v at time zero is equal to u. We can use that fact to calculate this arbitrary constant c. So this v is a function of time, of course. Okay, it depends on time a and c are constants. And v at time zero, well, we just plug zero in for t, is equal to u. That's what we're calling the speed at time zero. So, but a times zero is zero, so you can see from this that c is just equal to u. So now we can write down our formula for v. v of t, or just v, is a t plus u, or u plus a t. Now we know that v, the speed, is the rate of change of distance traveled with respect to time. s is the distance traveled. So we set ds dt equal to what we just got, u plus at. And we want a function whose derivative is u plus at, so we have another integration problem. Again, we can think of this equation, well, it's a differential equation. We can think of it as a differential equation, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's an equation with a derivative in it, and we will study these in more detail in later videos. It's a separable differential equation. The, the variables in it are s and t. The dependent variable is s, the independent variable is t. The u and a are just constants, of course. So uh, everything involving s is on one side and everything involving t is on the other side. Separate it out. That's the first step in solving um, this type of differential equation. The next step is just to integrate both sides. So we just stick an integral sign in front of both sides. So you can think of the left-hand side as integrating 1 with respect to s. That's going to give us 1s. When you integrate a differential, you just get the variable itself. Now we also have a constant of integration here, but we just imagine bringing it over to the other side and combining it with, with the constant of integration from this second integral to get a single constant of integration, which we can call c or d or whatever we like. 
Okay, anyway, let's integrate u plus a t with respect to time. u is just a constant. If we integrate u with respect to time, we just multiply u by t. It's just like integrating 5 with respect to time. That would give us 5t. What about the integral of a t? Well, a is just a constant. We have t to the power of 1, so we add 1 onto the power to get 2, and we divide by that new power. So here's our half a t squared that we know about. And I'll just write in the constant. I'll call it d, whatever you want to call it. Now, to find out what d is, we use the fact that the initial position is 0. So at t equals 0, s is 0. So our s, of course, is a function of time. So we use the fact that the position s at time 0 is 0. So we imagine plugging 0 in here. And we set this equal to 0. So we can see straight away that d is 0. Um, so we go back up here and replace d with 0. So provided s is 0 when t is 0, we derive our formula for the distance traveled by a particle moving um, linearly with uniform acceleration a.